Harriet and Frederick be up there just like, what is they gonna do? Yeah, they be, I think Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass would be like, um, you have the most millionaires and billionaires of African Americans here in the U.S. What? what why can they make it and why can't y'all make it? You know, like, who, who's holding you down that you need to not be as successful as any of these other people who have? Hey, yo, what's up, guys? So I'm coming to you with another video, and we're doing a reaction video to everything is going to be all white. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people have done this video. We're going to do a reaction video to it put my thoughts in it and everything. I think one thing that I want to do with this video that's going to be different with other people's video is pair it up with the 2014 movie satire comedy Dear White People and what was satire back in 2014 is reality like a matrix false reality of these people in 2022 right and so we're going to take a look at it you know and, it, and again this is all creasing up with the rage bait, the outrage bait, everything clickbait. And so, sure, there's a demographic of the of people that want to be in this confirmation bias, but at the same time, I think people are tired of this, this race baiting type of content, right? And so, we're gonna take a look at that, so we're gonna break it down real quick. So with that said, shall we begin? But first up, of course, if you're new to my channel, what is up? My name is Mitch, Mavic Mitch. Hey, Mitch, Mitch, the real Mitch, all the Mitches, and pretty much I like talking about what I talk about. So, current events, reviews, pop culture, social, political commentary. Be sure to check out all those videos as you're finishing this video. I think what annoys me most about white people is when they pretend like they're the victim. <laughs> What's also annoying is when they, you know, when they kill us. What is fragile about whiteness when everything has been constructed around it? So, I mean, again, other people point this out, right? And so, I think there's this, like, catharsis portion in which, again, this is made for a certain audience in which they want to be validated in their thoughts, right? And so... Because really, we have come to the point where it is okay to be racist against white people, right? It, it, you don't get canceled for that, right? That's that that's if 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 not if that's not a virtue signal, it's it's warranted, right? And so, every part of who I am has been distorted or criminalized. It's really just a bunch of white lies. <laughs> the storm in the Capitol. Of course, we're going to go with the Jan 6. And then going back to, uh, what's her name? Linda Sosor? Like, you should talk. Like, uh, uh, anti-Semitism and all that stuff. Patriots, you're ridiculous. Margaret Cho. One of the definitions of American whiteness is ignorance. White people, we are not your problem. You are. Should white people today feel any responsibility for slavery? <laughs> Hell yeah. White Jesus or black Jesus? Jesus was not white. Think of geography. Ain't no way. So, oh, and they go this in this um, religion aspect. I like Michael Knowles' notion of it, um, in which he says real quick, like, why are you saying Jesus was? Um, Jesus is. Jesus is still alive type thing. And so I like that portion, right? Jesus walked around with blonde hair and blue eyes. Also, people mentioned, I think it was Matthew Walsh, and I, of course, I agree, like, different religions actually depicted Jesus and Mary um, as their, what they, of their ethnicity type thing. And so, um, just to make the, the message of Jesus um, in the Bible kind of like universal, right? And so, I, and it's, I, I don't know who is making that argument. Like, for, really quick, I don't know who is making the argument that Jesus is white. I don't think you would actually go to any really Christian Bible person ever um, and say is is Jesus white I think a lot of people would say well he's a Jew he, if you want to be a little bit more technical he's Israeli right he's part of the Levant he's part of that um, um, region of the of that portion of the world like again the Levant I don't know what what other portion however you wouldn't want to say it so he he's Hebrew like you know fears the end of the world. For us as native people, the end of the world already happened like multiple times. Symbols and monuments, these are mementos of racism. Bring that statue down. What about TCBY yogurt or something? 
everybody gets. You know, my, oh, again, a, a quick problem I get with this is obviously they want to frame it as all of this racist stuff. So of course they're going to frame it that way. But like, I don't think majority of the people would even maybe maybe the people in the south but i mean the confederate fra flag thing they like they want to propagate this confederate flag type thing as if it is popular to be used i mean i suppose some people use it right uh, but like because even like in canada there was a in the freedom freedom convoy there was an individual with a with the confederate flag um, obviously people were thinking that he's someone who is trying to instigate something, he's like, like, imposed there, he's not actually part of the freedom anything. But it was also one single event, right, or like, so one single individual. And then obviously the media just pointed at that one versus the rest of the Canadians that was being, uh, fun, safe, protesting peacefully and all that stuff, but we had to point at the one person that's holding a confederate flag and again with this it, and going back to this video it, it's just propagating this idea and i'm going to continue hold on because i have other thoughts the truth has to be told about history we have to make sure that these stories are told from our perspective there's always hope. You no know saying we don't give up. It's about obliterating systemic and institutionalized racism. I'm pretty sure there's one thing out there, I think if you have a bingo card, as far as what you could say, do you want to say woke, do you want to say institutional racism, do you want to say confer, uh, confer, uh, confirmation bias, um, inter internalized racism, colorism, I think there should be a bingo card. You know what, actually, you know what, we're going to watch this freaking show, um, at least the first episode, and do exactly that. I'm going to have a bingo card. I did it for like the elections. Because they're gonna say the same thing about the wall, immigration, and all this stuff. And so I'm gonna probably do that for this video. It's a wild place, y'all. It's a wild place. I know Harriet and Frederick be up there just like, what is they gonna do? Yeah, they be, I think Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass would be like, um, you have the most millionaires and billionaires of African Americans here in the US. What? Why can they make it and why can't y'all make it? You know, like, who, who's holding you down that you need to not be as successful as any of these other people who have? So, um, what the other point I, I, I was trying to bring up in all of this is that for whatever reason, and I understand there are, like, they want to keep this idea going, this racism and this white supremacy going as if it's something relevant, which it's not. Like, you, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Like, tell me who, who is. But I don't think that, like, they bring this idea as if it's so much more powerful than they actually are. But the point being is what I was trying to get at is they do this so much in the media. Like, the, the main bad guy in the HBO Max Watchmen is white. white actually KKK. Like, if you go into Peacemaker, also an HBO Max, who is one of the main bad guys? It is the KKK, like the dragon, like Peacemaker's dead, a racist, actual white supremacist. It's a, it's a bad, it's, it's the bad guy. If you go into The Boys, season two, who is the bad guy? A Hitler, like, like Stormfront is actually a, a person in the, the Third Reich. She is like kind of immortal in a sense where she has lived throughout the years uh, in her younger self. And so the idea was to make this master race when it comes to Homelander. And again, it's, it's this idea, like I don't like, to me it's a, a trope, you know, like just as much as there was a lot of movies using the Russians as the bad guys. And I suppose going towards the 2000s after 9-11, it was always the, the Arabs and the Middle Easterns and all of the um, Iranians and, and Saudi Arabia, whatever whatever portion of the world you want to use that, and they were the bad guys, right? And then maybe at some point, like even in Red Dawn, they used the Kore North Koreans, I think, I believe they used. And so it's weird that they're using this trope of white people, white supremacies, Nazis as the big bad guy when they really isn't a thing. Like, y you cannot operate as an overt white supremacist. You can operate as a overt black supremacist, but it's like, they don't have any power. I, so I don't understand, and then you can say, well, historically they have power. I don't care about historically. I'm caring about right now. No one on the left or right 
Like, no one on the right would associate with that. They may think they do, but... And they lump them in, like they talk about Richard Spencer endorsing Trump back in 2016. But who did Richard Spencer endorse in 2020? Uh, Biden? Uh, Richard Spencer actually thought, you know, that Trump wasn't doing good enough for the uh, white people. So he went for Biden. And then now, of course, if you have been keeping up with the news, Biden's putting a 30 million mu budget money into crack pipes for minorities. Yeah, you want you want minorities to be hooked on drugs while you're not going to prosecute white people. You're going to just it, it's it's racism, right? Not only racism, but you're it's all it's white supremacy with extra steps. <laughs> like, I, like, all right, I, I ranted enough. Okay, so we're gonna watch in comparison the Dear White People trailer back in 2014. You know, I have I watched this movie back in 2014 when I was in politics. So a part of this was like I was feeling it, right? I was understanding it. That's what I would gravitate towards. Um, I, I probably would watch. I should should probably watch this movie again to see how I can view it now in retrospect. But this is actually one of the first video movies that I saw Tessa Thompson in. So. Also, r r while that plays, like, I remember, I don't remember anything bad about this movie, like, um, this is before things got super woke, but this is the introductions of that time period, right? Like, even other people mentioned this, like Jack Posobiec, as far as, like, the glee being the en entry point as far as this. There's other factors, but there's this, like, idea in this time period, like, er the early 2010s type thing, or mid-2010s. Only college radio station. Dear white people... The minimum requirement of black friends needed to not seem racist has just been raised to two. Sorry, but your weed man, Tyrone, does not count. Dear white people, please stop touching my hair. Does this look like a petting zoo to you? Mistress Ann, dating a black person to piss off your parents is a form of racism. A show of racist. Black people can't be racist. Racism describes a system of disadvantage based on race. See, okay, that was that that line. Um, I think it goes on in which she talks about racism is racism plus power. That was parody. That was satire in 2014. People actually live in 2022 believing that like black people can't be racist because like as she said, you have to be in a system of like of of a power to become racist. And again, like. When this came out, I remember it was funny, at least to me at the time, right? And so, um, I would want to look into this again and see how it pairs up. Because, I'm actually, I'll finish it. Because there's there's actually some um, redeeming portions in this movie, right? And I don't see what the point is in blaming white folks for everything. I really don't see the issue. Never ran into any lynch mob. It would be good about someone like you as school president. Someone else is running. Together, we can bring black back to Winchester. Yeah. Who does Sam think she is? She was like Spike Lee and Oprah had some sort of pissed off baby. I hope you make it all right. How do I feel about dear white people? It's blacker than thou propaganda from a bougie Lisa Bonet wannabe. It was also interesting with this since it's 2014. This is barely when people were getting on YouTube, right? And so if if it's kind of funny, like this character of Tessa Thompson, I forgot her real name, like her her her, her character name in the movie. But I mean, if she was a, if this was done in 2022, she would have a podcast. Like people scare you. I listen to Mumford and Sons and watch Robert. Arthur. Okay, so one one aspect, and I if you want to watch this movie, um, plot twist. But one aspect of this movie that I thought thought endearing which they wouldn't do in 2022 is that this person this character is black but not traditionally what you would think as black because they like he said he lends to, to Mumford and Sons he's at, he's gay and, well I guess gay, get, being black and gay in this 2022 is more celebrated but in 2014 it was kind of almost seen as like taboo type of thing because you're not fitting the category so in 2014 that was still kind of like iffy right because there was still like if you were black and gay it was still seen as a negative type of thing but now it's kind of like celebrated if if not more like you can't even be black and gay you have to be black and trans or, or non-binary like by just being black and gay isn't enough Probably I'm black enough in the union. I don't please. You're only technically black. Sometimes I think the hardest thing to be in the American workforce is an educated white guy. 
They pay millions of dollars on their lips, their tans, Jay-Z tickets, because they want to be like us. I can do what I do! You want to know why they used to call me Black Mitch? Absolutely. Nobody called you that. I, I totally forgot the was of character named Mitch. Put a like in the comments for all the Mitches, you know? So. Got no idea what they see when they see you. And you've got a thing for Taylor Swift. I know, it's my Mac. Okay. Your Mac's library. Oh, I'm so careful. You don't understand. <laughs> Girls like me have to pick a side. I'm sick of your tragic mulatto bull. You can't say mulatto. Mulatto, mulatto, mulatto. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm laughing because I like this portion. This was a very endearing moment. I'm going to just give a spoiler. Whatever. Watch the movie. It's 2014. But this is the part where it's endearing because those two is actually boyfriend and girlfriend. And, and he brings, there's this level in which her virtue signal wasn't enough. And you can, and, and by her other friends, it would probably be hip, hip, uh, hypocritical, right? But it's this idea in which she espouses this rhetoric, which she actually does not fall in, that she does not even practice in her real life. And that's where the satire comes in, you know, where, where it's a comedy and obviously there's an enduring portion where she kind of like has to mesh these realities. And so that was satire, right? Right, in, in which, again, she espouses this virtue signal in which, again, she does not model in her own life. But you cannot have that in 2022. Like, you have to double down every single time. Like, she can't even, this person could not exist in 2022. Like, you have to actively live in that world. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't deviate anything. She would be cancelled immediately if they found out she espouses this rhetoric and has a white boyfriend. Right? It's, 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 it's just as much as they attack Candace Owens for having a white husband, as much as they attack Brandon Tatum for having, I, I believe, his, his wife is white. And so it's the same idea. They can't, they cannot have this deviation. And how, and again, we went from no, like, you can't have interracial, mer like, relationships to having interrelationships is problematic. Like, this is... How'd you feel if someone started a Dear Black People? No need. Mass media from Fox News makes it clear what white people think of us. Your hair is so cute. Is it weaved? Weaved. It's weave. Noun. Present tense. Racism is over in America. Well, the only people who are thinking about it are Mexicans, probably. <laughs> All right, um, wrapping it up, uh, you know, I, the point of this video comparing dear white people to everything is going to be all, all white. So again, like I said in the beginning, what was satire in 2014 is reality in 2022, right? And that even more on top of that, like I said, like you, we had to double down in all of this, you know, like. I, I would guarantee a lot of people do not care about this. The only people that's making waves about this movie is people on the conservative side, of course, because they think how, how racist this is, which it is. But the point being, like, is there an actual audience? And I'm sure there, there will be a lot of people who would watch this. But, at the, but the vast majority of people, right, in the middle, I think they're damn tired. Right? If you if you don't know, if you're not catching up, like even like Lord of the Rings, they're bec it's becoming woke. You know, they're having, in this world that is centered around European, if not Anglo, um, mythology is now incorporating black and Latino people. Like, I, this, this is not the movie I was, I was, this is not the world that Tolkien imagined, you know? Again, people, and again, I agree. If, if you're going to take like a, like a, one of those Chinese classic movies, why are you going to insert other ethnicities? Or, of course, they talk about, like, Wakanda, and, like, why are you going to insert white people in Wakanda, you know? Like, it doesn't make sense. So, last thing points, again, you know, we'll see how this movie plays, this movie being everything's going to be all, all, all white. Um, so, we're going to see how that plays out. Obviously, this, it's being downloaded to life, but you can't really see it unless you have um, a different um, browser, whatever. And so, yeah, we're going to check it out. And so, with, I just want to do a quick comparison, again, with all of this, like, where we are in this world that we are living in. And so, it's all nuts and crazy. So, with that said, thank you for watching. Comment below, share, like, and subscribe. And 
be part of the conversation. Tell me what you think, and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Um, you can follow me on my Instagram at HeyMitchMitch, and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace, peace, peace. Be with you.